what would you have? Let me ask you. What if you had like a pendant on your shit? Like, oh what would, shit! What would your what would your what would your diamond back in the back in the golden days? I've had this. What would your myself. diamond encrusted pendant be? It would probably be a lion head. Lion, a lion head. Lion head. Like that's like so regular. Yeah, that's regular. And you wonder why? Why? My father smoked a pipe all the way up to I was about 12 or 13 uh-huh. and he had the lion head pipes the big huge ones remember the pipe shop that used to be in the valley no in Genesee Valley it was, a, it was a pipe and tobacco shop right okay. in, in the, like right where Yankee Candle is now there was like a pipe shop a Who pipe and tobacco Yankee shop Candle by the way <laughs> I don't right. know weirdos the right. so those are the cool those are the coolest things in my house that I knew growing up they were they were huge and they were made out of like porcelain and he had some brown ones and so my father is a leo and he okay. had gold chains <laughs> but he was like a light sk- he's like a gil sk- he had the whole gil scott heron deal working for him in his younger days did he had a beard on his he adam's had, apple like he had on his that throat? he had everything connecting like all the way around the big afro gil scott heron and then he had a gold chain with a lion head on it and that was always that's the now mind you, that's the coolest shit I've ever seen. Okay. Up until that point, so I always said if I wanted to, I would get like a big Buster Rhymes lion head charm with like black diamonds in the eyes or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, did you ever see the um the opening of the ice cream store in Japan? They had a release, right? Uh-huh. And you know, Pharrell is there, and then he's got. Oh, he's you got, mean the brand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Store. Ice cream store. So, like, he had a whole he got a whole team that don't have nothing to do with the music side of things. Right. Well, one of these guys opened up his jacket, bro, and he had an ice cream cone, and it was like with brown and yellow diamonds and everything. It was the chunkiest, nastiest piece of like, oh my god! And like he killed the whole, the entire release was about shoes and his fucking necklace. I was insane. Wow. I'll be honest with you. I did go online a few nights ago and look at the prospect of getting a grill. <laughs> I I want one bad. On the bottom? I want the one gold, bad. I like still want one. on the bottom? That's fucking, that's, I that's tried, dope. I tried to get one for my wedding day. A grill? I was going to have, I was going to try to keep it a secret. I was going to put it in at the church. And then when, <laughs> <laughs> when it got time, I was going to say, uh, you know, to have it to hold. And it was going to like, pew. I wanted the one that the RZA had in the nope with the, the, that with meth, the bangs that meth had in the no hooks video. It was just the bottom. And yeah, it said like meth across the bottom with the two things. I want that one or the one Puff had in that one poster. Anyway, I, yeah, I, I still want one. I'm I not, did look at getting the grill. I looked at I, I googled Detroit grills teeth. Yep, teeth, teethes, <laughs> teetheses, and uh. <laughs> I was I was looking up grill. I was thinking about getting one. I don't know. I, I could get one for like four hundred bucks. You know how I want gold though, like all gold, right? You know there. how they say on Twitter, I don't care, I don't care. That's me. I want one. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I want one. I like that. I think it's that shit dope to me. And I don't give a shit. I want the fangs. <laughs> the two fangs, you know what I'm saying? I want it. So what? That's dope. Uh, so yeah, welcome to the Pick and Roll Podcast. This is my name is. I've been hesitant to use my government name on these things. These days. <laughs> my name is Hello, get it out. Hello, boy, get it out. I mean, if you Google me, you're not gonna find anything crazy, right? Uh, and you are. I'm Kudera Ebnu, and that's this that goes the same thing for me, right? Pick and Roll Podcast. I'm not on Otis either. You can follow us at P A R Podcast. You can. Email us at pickandrollpodcast at gmail.com. Today we're going to be talking about the first appearance of your old Drew. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to talk about fantasy running backs as yeah, well. Yeah, we do need to hit that. Um, we got drafts coming up. I don't, I got one coming up. Yeah, sure well, it's early yeah. for a draft. But we want to start by giving our, I guess, I want to give condolences to a degree. <laughs> I don't know if condolences are appropriate, and it's not correct for you to be laughing at this. It's not right for you to be laughing at this. Paul George. So last night, I was working on some music um, till really late, and uh, went upstairs, turned on ESPN, and it was like breaking news. Uh, and they were talking about Paul George, and they wouldn't show the video for Paul George. Right. 
and um, I went to the Kali. Yes, sir. And it shout was the first the Kali, post. Man. I've been yeah. enjoying. I've only been on Kali a short time, but I've enjoyed it. You heard time. Combat Jack shout it out to Kali too. Yeah, on the Tariq Nasir. That's dope. That's dope. That's sweet. But anyway, um, this whole thing involving uh, Paul George and his leg. For those of you who haven't seen the video, uh, we will make an effort at making it available in the comment section or, or in the info section below. And needless to say, uh, oh yeah, the machines come. Paul through. George was chasing down somebody trying to get a chase down block or whatnot, and he ran his his foot landed somewhere between the floor and the stanchion that holds up the basket, and his bottom leg folded like a like a sausage like a sausage taco from Taco Bell, and it was very scary. And very, why are you laughing? Because I'm not. You're intentionally that's the only, using. That's the only thing imagery. that I can equate with. I had one the other day and it gave me a headache. Okay. Um, An acute angle? Yeah. So it was very horrendous, very sad. It's not even necessarily a joking matter because it is very serious. Um, I haven't really kept up with the story throughout the day, but I know he immediately was in surgery. Um, so it was very dangerous and, 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 and very sad to see it happen, especially with a player who just experienced a real big time breakout season. Um, and we can talk about what this means to the Pacers, um, what it does to their playoff hopes. They did recently acquire Rodney Stuckey. They did recently lose Lance Stevenson. Um, so I, off off mic, we were talking about Rodney Stuckey and what he's gonna have to do now. You know, and I, I contended when he was with the Pistons for the last five years. If, if Stuckey could give me 17, if he could give me 17 and five and shoot 44% from the field, I think that the Pistons could have possibly been a playoff team, but you think I'm crazy. Yeah, and I don't think you're crazy for wishing. I think you're crazy for wishing on Rodney Stuckey. I mean, you could probably find another place to bet your money, bro. Like, Rodney Stuckey, I, I, it's the same project we have in Michigan sports over and over and over again, and I don't think Michigan is unique to that, but I'm going to talk about Michigan sports. We always want to see what the backup guy can do. We always want to see what the guy that is not necessarily the primary go-to guy can do. Get him in the game. Uh, let's you know. Let's see what he has. And then when he doesn't have anything, there's always a litany of excuses. It's because we're always looking for something. We're always looking for something that we're missing. Yeah. And they've needed scoring from that wing. But nevertheless, um, that does kind of train. That that could have a big effect on. The power struggle in the East um, come the regular season. Uh, I think that you know the Cavs, if they, they they're still, you know, it looks like they're going to end up getting Kevin Love once this 30-day window passes. They'll obviously be the clear favorites. Um, them Chicago, like we talked about a few podcasts ago, Washington will be better. Right. But a couple you know, of teams that will make some noise. Know. But I mean, here we are with the you know the usual suspects, but you kind of throw Cleveland in there because of the. I mean, just uh, the shakeup that's uh, going to happen in the East now with LeBron going back to Cleveland. But, but I think that when these things happen in sports, I think it always gives people an opportunity in sports or entertainment. It gives people an opportunity to back up and see the larger picture. And it, what it brought to mind for me was the culture of injury in professional sports. Because those of us who are outside of that framework have really, truly no idea. Um, I remember when there were people who were questioning somebody because he didn't play and, and with with what was considered a relatively minor issue. Um, and I, my whole thing is I never disrespect athletes for being soft or for being for, for not being able to play through injury, because, first of all, I recognize that the majority of these guys are playing hurt anyway. Yeah, that's a, anyway. Part, of, that's a part of playing. The second thing is, I don't think that the majority of us have the concept of the pain that could be involved in some of these injuries. Yeah, definitely not the pain and then the gravity of it all. I yeah. mean, you, you realize that I mean, if you suffer even just like you said, a minor or a moderate uh, injury um, to something that actually stops you from not performing your job, it's not just hurting you today or for the next six weeks. It's hurting your career over the long haul. Yeah. Like, so your earning potential starts to decrease the very moment that you're not able to step back on the court, the field, the pitch, or whatever it is. And you're cognizant of that as an athlete, I would assume. Um, I, I look at Derrick Rose, for example. Yeah. He's you a, know, Derrick Rose. A, a test case. Signed the deal. You know, got hurt. 
stayed hurt, got hurt again. Um, I mean, and when you look at a situation like Paul George's, you can't help but think about what are the psychological effects going to be. Right. You know, when he comes back to the game, I mean, he may heal physically. and He's relatively young, um, but his style of play depends a lot on his athleticism. And psychologically, that has to do something to you. It should, it should. But see, I, what I hope that Paul George was doing was paying attention to the Derrick Rose experiment through all of this. So what does that mean? That means stay your behind out of the cameras, get well and get well on your own time, yeah. on your own, you know, in your own environment. Don't give the fans or the team, the organization, any ammunition to suggest that maybe you're not, you know, being 100 with them. You know what I mean? While I don't necessarily 100% agree with the way the Chicago Bulls handled uh, Derrick Rose situation, Derrick Rose didn't handle it properly either. So they, you know, they they could fight fight it out however they want. Paul George, I hope he learned his lesson by watching what Derrick Rose and the Chicago Bulls went through with such a serious injury. Because we're talking about he's going to miss the year easily. They're saying he's going to miss the year. So that means, dude, I'm not saying go away. You need to be there for your teammates at the very least. But we don't need to see. You know, like how Derrick Rose, we don't see, need to see windmill dunks and layup lines. Yeah, and right. Put the suit on. The last thing I heard was 12 to 15 months. So, I mean, we're talking about basically his his knee had, to, I mean, his leg has to be basically reconstructed. So, God. Um, yeah, that's it was crazy. that serious. That's it was crazy. that serious. And you know, the craziest. And now he's already a professional. He's got guaranteed money. He's made a good chunk of money as an NBA player. And he, you know, he'll get better and he'll still be able to garner attention from his own team and other teams throughout the rest of his career. Right. There are guys that suffer injuries like this and worse at the collegiate level, at the high school level. You know, and so you're talking about how we are able to assess that level of pain or that level of disappointment. But the gravity of it, the, having to face the idea that your entire career could be literally over or changed over as you know it. Yeah. In one injury, you know, and it ain't a broken it, finger. Yeah. It's not a, you know, it's right. not a, you know, not a broken rib or something like that. We're talking about your legs, you know, what I'm saying? how yeah. you go out and make it happen. That's and what crazy. is what is that? And again, what is that fear returning? What you wonder why some players may come back and never be the same. Um, and you have to think that at some point, some of some athletes have to be experiencing some level of post-traumatic, you know, yeah. stress disorder Anxiety because of the level of injuries that they're receiving. But shout outs to Paul George. A um, lot of support on Twitter last night, um, you know, not only from the NBA, but I think from the entire Twitterverse um, with the please pray for Paul or something like that. They were saying, "Don't why are you laughing?" Because dude? I think that's kind of lame. And, 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 and you know, the please, it's a trending topic. Yeah, please pray for Paul. I, you know, look, when when fans start to get involved in that kind of stuff, I always call bullshit because they don't really care. They don't give a much. Shit. Slow down with you know with the please pray for Paul. It's a bad thing. It happens to a lot of athletes all the time. And you know, my my question is though. Indiana as an organization, right? They've got all kinds of personal issues going on just within the organization in, in the team. You know what I think is going to happen? No matter what, I don't say no matter what, but the roller coaster that it looks like the season is about to be for Indiana. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to fire the coach. Vocal? Yep. I think they're going to fire the coach because he caught some heat last year. He caught some heat in, in the playoff season last year. So he's on deck now. Like, I'm sorry. It's his team now. I disagree. I he went to the fight. conference finals last year. Yeah. And I think that the Paul George injury just bought him a year. I think they're gonna fire him, bro. I really do. I think I he caught know. heat. He caught heat for losing to a better team. Yeah, you know, but so, which is which is stupid. It, true, but in the same token, you have to consider that you have to consider the fact that there was a large internal melee going yeah. on with that team around January, February when they started losing. And but that's his yeah, responsibility. So maybe you're right. Maybe you're that's right. His responsibility maybe you're in, right. in a way. Or we've been trained to think that that's a coach's responsibility. You what, what personal problems? Not personal problems, but maintaining chemistry the in, the, in the yeah. Yeah, we still got to go out there and knock them down. Fellas. Is it is it the coach's responsibility? I think it's part of it. I think it's the coach coach's responsibility to keep it private. Yeah. In my opinion, yeah, because true. it happens. It happens. it happens. I mean, it happens at your job. Yeah. You know, but it's your responsibility as it's your responsibility as the leader to be able to keep those things not necessarily tight lipped, 
but keep things in perspective. Under control. Say, yeah, yeah. That team looked like a bunch of children on the big stage. And well, there was Vogel being a young coach. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, did he have control of the team? Everybody knew about all the turmoil that was going on. I mean, it was story after story after story. And then here they are just, you know, floundering. So Lance, uh, you know, Lance is gone. Yeah. Um, and the degree to which he was a distraction, I don't think any of us, we, we all think we know, but we don't necessarily know for sure. But um, shout outs to Paul George, you know, speedy recovery, all of that good stuff. Um, I'm not going to hashtag please pray for Paul or no. nothing. But I got a chance to see you know, Paul play, you know, down there in Indy, man. And, he's and nasty. He, and he, it's amazing to watch him play. The fans absolutely adore yes, that man. Do. And so I know that they're going to rally behind him at, at, as well they should. I don't yeah. think he should have any trouble uh, with the organization as long as he keeps uh, his right. focus on his recovery and not on the social side of things. You know what I'm saying? His name does not need to show up in any other story that is not related to basketball for a year. Right. Shout outs to Jay Russ in Indianapolis. You know, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, you feeling some kind of way about this. But, you know, um, yes, Kobe, you know, um, shout outs to you. Uh, so, yeah, let's move on. We're going to keep it around sports and we're going to talk about fantasy running backs. So, rule of thumb, running backs first round, go a lot, go often. You get your sprinkling of a wide receiver. You get your quarterbacks here and there. Right, the heavy hitters. But overall, it's running back. So, talk to me about, we talked about the fact that Frank Gore has kind of fallen yeah. a little bit this year um talk to me about who you're taking number one well i mean, I mean in terms of running suspects. backs yeah there's usual suspects up there you, i mean you got guys like adrian peterson um who just kind of set the standard for a guy that's going to be going to give you everything right so the way we used to draft running backs were workhorses guys going to get 18 to 25 carries a game touches touches right well, I'm not sure if that's necessarily staying that way. I'm looking at um, a list right now, and I'm not seeing Arian Foster in the top five, and I think that's just questions about how he's going to come back from that injury. But I see LaShawn McCoy. LaShawn McCoy catches a lot of balls out of the backfield. Yep. And so this all-purpose back, um, Jamal Charles as well, this all-purpose back um, – <clears throat> element to the NFL right now is probably going to be where you want to I don't know say focus your fantasy draft but depending on where you are seated that would be a guy that can get you a lot of key points late in games because you're talking about not being subbed out on third down you're talking about a guy that can still punch one in and then he's still your first option no matter it's first and long third and long it doesn't matter um, he, the, the quarterback does not necessarily have to find his primary receiver he can always dump it off and then you talk, and definitely, definitely you need one of these guys. Matt Forte is another one. Garbage time, all-purpose backs are eating all of that. Yes, block. they are. They're killing all garbage time. Yes, they are. Matt Forte is my guy, you know, um, because I'm, I'm in a PPR league. I'm in two PPR leagues um, every year. I always focus on running backs that catch out of the backfield as well. Um, you know, I fell for the C.J. Spiller thing a few years ago mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Um some people say he's posed for a breakout, but I'm not quite convinced. I try to stay away from the grind, from the grinders. Or if I can get a grinder and a versatile back yeah. to be my, my one and two, that's what I'll do. Uh, like you take a Marshawn Lynch. Right. If you take a Marshawn Lynch who has had, I believe, the most 100-yard, he had the most 100-yard games last year um, or something like that. Um, I know that he had uh, double-digit touchdowns last year. Um, if you take Marshawn Lynch, what I usually look for is somebody who's going to catch out of the backfield. Somebody like a Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush somebody right. like a, you know. Um, and I had Reggie Bush a couple of times. And he didn't do very well because he got hurt. Yeah. And the you know the way the Lions offense is working, it just kind of was some timing. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, Reggie Bush has only played 16 games once, I think, in his career a couple yeah. years ago when he was with the Dolphins. And he kind of balled out. Yeah, he did. Um so I, I do think that it, I'm looking at the list right now. You know, I Alfie would, Moe is surprising me right now. Who's that? Alfred Morris. That guy. See, that's the thing. Is he is he running away from defensive secondaries, or is it because he's just punching like short range touchdown? Touchdowns? You know, I, I really don't know, but I would be very careful. I would be very careful about drafting Alfred Morris this year, especially since 
he doesn't have the comfort of Mike Shanahan's offense who you know had had Mike Anderson running for a thousand yards <laughs> yeah. back in the day you know what I'm saying um yeah I would be very careful of Alfred Morris I mean he's proven though you know in his first two years that he is a grinder and that he can he can handle the load it's just I do concern myself with that or um, is he sports in Ohio so I don't know if he's game to game. I gotta, I gotta take a look at that cat because he's very high on this list. Bernard, like you know, all these guys. I'm, I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little Eddie Lacy, bro. I wouldn't say that they're that high. I mean, these are second round guys. You know, Alfred Morris is a second round guy. Bernard is a second round guy, and I think that that that's just due. Yeah. Um, you know, I see Demarco Murray. They have Demarco Murray currently ranked tenth here. Um, that's. That's kind of high. I picked up DeMarco Murray a couple of years ago as a free agent, and he paid some dividends for me, but I'm not touching the Cowboys. Yeah. I, I'm just – I'm really trying to stay away from the Cowboys. I think Tony Romo is in for a downturn. Yeah. Um, Doug Martin has been impressive. I think that he has good numbers coming out of the backfield. I think that the resistance to putting Arian Foster in the top five is based on the instability that they have on offense, period. Okay, not just the um, injury. You know, Fitzpatrick starting at, at – at, quarterback there's a worry that they'll be behind a lot so that will take away from his touches what about okay so i don't see steven ridley that's obviously because of fumbles well you got steven ridley you got vereen david wilson from no david wilson is from the giants but i'm talking about the patriots i'm talking just about your patriots i should say because i'm sure we'll be talking about your patriots over the course of the year um vereen is going to take a lot of i mean they they, that's a platoon Vereen is probably the more, I believe that Vereen is more of the ground and pound guy, maybe, no, maybe not. the other way around. Um, Ridley is. Ridley, Ridley yeah. is kind of the short yardage guy. Last year, a lot of his touches got taken by LeGarrette Blunt too, yeah. who's not in the picture anymore. Right. So, between Ridley, Vereen, I think they also had Brandon, Brandon Bolden. Yeah, Bolden, but he was hurt a lot. And that, um, but, that, but I think that the reason, I mean, but Ridley still put up numbers. I think it's the fumbles. The fumbles yeah. late in the year. Same thing I was, I was bringing up about. squatty. I was... <laughs> Quick, don't bring like it. I think it was like week ten, week eleven. Don't bring it up. Then I was talking about uh, the uh, tailback from the Giants, Wilson. David Wilson, fumble problems, neck problems, yeah, and hurt his neck the other night. Mm. Got a stinger, quote unquote. Wow. Well, so the Giants are in this way, by the way. Yeah, um, you know their receiving core is is going to be different. Hakeem Nix is gone. Uh, yeah, Eli is going to be. Under under duress, <laughs> under duress. But we're talking about running backs today. Jamal Charles, good all around talent. Um, kind of small, kind of small. If he doesn't get popped, uh, you know, Forte. Like I, it's a lot of balls that's gonna be thrown around in in, uh, in Chicago with uh, Marshall and Jeffrey. So you could see his 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 reception numbers drop a little bit. They also have Martellus Bennett at tight end. Um, his reception numbers could dip a little bit. I think Marshawn Lynch is going to continue to be Marshawn Lynch because he really fits their style of play. Yeah. And because uh, Russell Wilson turned back into a game manager last year, so he's going to—I think he's going to rely heavily on Marshawn Lynch in the initial. Right. What about this guy, Zach Stacy? Now, wait a minute. Did did the did the, uh, the Rams get rid of Richardson? Because he was the backup to Stephen Jackson, and he had some really good quality minutes when uh, Jackson was hurt. No, Steven Jackson went to Atlanta. Right, that's what I'm saying. Richardson was his backup. And they oh. got Zach Stacy here. I'm wondering, did, did they get rid of Richardson? I got to look into that. And they drafted uh, Macy O'Sar, Trey right. Mason. See, that's, that's... From Auburn. That's interesting there. Um, Zach, I mean, Zach Stacy t- tends to be... I mean, he's in the top 10 here. So he's somebody's darling right now. Um, Running people over. I, you know, I would be careful. I would be very careful. Um, And looking at the second tier, I'm looking for a couple of guys to make um, some a bit of a change this year. I I liked Andre Ellington last year. He paid some dividends for me midpoint of the year, I believe. Um, I think that he'll get the feature spot there. Um, Toby Gearhart in Jacksonville. He might, yeah, he might lose his carries because they'll be behind a little bit. But Maurice Jones-Drew is gone. Maurice Jones-Drew is a Raider now. Good luck. I think Monte Ball. This is his year. Yeah, cause no, I had no Sean Marino in both leagues last year. He got a lot of touches, yeah. and and with the amount of time that they spent up, you know, he he got a lot of carries. Um, so yeah, Monty Ball is going to do pretty well. Um, what's uh, what's Y2K? What's uh, CJ Y2K gonna do? Nothing. <laughs> 
I think I think Chris Johnson smoke herb. So I think he I think he he looked like so he looked like Trick Daddy in 1998. Ricky Williams smoked. He was the like he smoked everybody under the bus. And I mean, you know, he was, yeah. he was a, a tough man to deal with out there, bro. I'm I'm kidding, Chris Johnson. <laughs> um, I would like to see Chris Johnson do well. It would be a very good thing for a young quarterback like Geno Smith to have somebody who can eat up some yards and eat up some carries and and eat up some time so he can make some, you know, so he can make some easier plays as opposed to having to take everything on his back. Um, you just see this feeling earlier. I'm gonna be honest with you. I would see CJ Spillers as maybe trying to do something this year. The whole team. I think he's leapfrogged Fred Jackson. Yeah. The, and the reason why? Because it may not be no Buffalo. Bills. I say the Bills and the Lions in the Super Bowl every year. So I'm gonna say CJ Spiller does well. Those are my two good, my two favorite teams growing up. Straight. That's another story. Yeah. Uh, let's talk family. about um, Joyke Bell. Would you pick up Joyke Bell? No. Would you start? Would you give Joyke Bell a, a flex? No, no. They're gonna they're gonna swing that ball around. They're gonna they're gonna try to get Stafford up near forty. I definitely. I think Joyke Bell though is going to be their goal line guy. Yeah. I wouldn't su- be surprised to see him get seven hundred. And then Reggie Bush's uh Reggie Bush's health is another question. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him get those guys. You know. Yeah, five to ten touches a game. Um, he could be good for a flex. Do you guys play with a flex? Yeah, we do. Okay. There's no reason to run. I mean, it's, it's almost like, like you said, like my Patriots. Why? You have to run the ball, man. You have to run the ball. Yeah. Even the, even your Patriots run the ball to keep defenses honest. We don't run it to keep it honest. We run it because, it, I mean, it, it, there's nothing to keep honest. They're running plays. Those little short passes, they only get six yards anyway. It's the same thing. Yeah, I, I hear you got to run saying. the ball. I hear what you're saying. Bro. I'm sorry. Yeah, Detroit, well... People are gonna make, they're gonna make a mention of that too. Watch, yeah. watch. If these running backs are not getting the ball, it's gonna be an issue. Why aren't they running the ball? They're Why aren't run, they running yeah, the ball? They're just throwing all day. They're de- they're predictable. You remember Kevin Smith was their running back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny, Ron. And, yeah, I think the Buffalo Bills as a <laughs> trying to be focused. Boy, the Lions, man. They got a they got a point to prove because you know they, they might not be in Buffalo. Where are they going? To Toronto? Aren't they still talking about going to Canada? I don't know. They you know they're talking about doing they something with the Bills. The Buffalo is that, Bills. Is the that Buffalo really Bills. gonna happen, bro? Is that really gonna happen? Let Buffalo me tell you so. If that happens, <laughs> that means anybody can get it. If if any other team is like the Webster's Dictionary definition of the NFL, it's, it's the, the Bills. Bills fan base. I mean, they've had they've had success. They've had bad times. The weather—it's like that's football. Yeah. If they can get rid of the Buffalo Bills as a franchise, I mean, they did it to Cleveland. So I guess it may not necessarily be too far from it. Last question: uh, Ray Rice suspended two games. Uh, could be a good running back three pickup. Round ten, round nine, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Strictly for fantasy purposes, a plug-in when you got a, a, a bye week, um, you know that he's going to run furious. You know he's going to get the touches. You know he's going to get the touch. He lost, he lost weight. He oh, lost twenty yeah, pounds. Yeah, yeah. He's so in, he's in good shape. Yeah, he's got a point to prove, and you now this could be an interesting year for Ray Rice. But um, will he hit the ground running? You know, at week three, I don't know. It might take him a couple weeks to get. To get his legs underneath. That's a good question. So my sleeper, uh, I guess my sleeper for this year, um, I never ever vote or never ever bet against Pittsburgh running backs. <laughs> never. <laughs> Le'Veon Bell, give me Willie Foster. Twelve fifty. Give me twelve fifty and ten touchdowns. Wow. Give me twelve fifty. How much is Roethlisberger making this year? Is he making like twenty one million dollars? Uh, don't give me the line. <sighs> anyway, um, so yeah, that's fantasy running backs. Um, as we get closer to the draft, we'll continue to do different subjects. Next, you know, our next show we'll do wide receivers yeah. and then tight ends. Do your research, um, check your list, your top twenty, top fifty, top hundred lists of running backs. And usually those orders are gonna stay the same. Very, very few lists are gonna have like totally different approaches to how they rank these guys. Right. So for the most part, when you're setting up your draft boards, um, you can almost follow these things to the letter. And also <clears throat> Remember what Ross said earlier. If you got a guy that's going to be a you know a grinder, a, a punch out guy, 
make sure you have that flexible running back to back him up because you're going to lose points and yardage. You might get him in touchdowns, but week to week to week, you're going to need a guy to rack up those uh, all-purpose yards, especially yeah. this year, especially this year. And if you agree or disagree with anything that we say, hit us on Twitter. Hit us on you know on our email. Tell us what you think. Um, if you have questions or anything of that nature, email them to us so we can talk about it here on the podcast. Um, we're going to go ahead and switch gears. We're going to talk about some news that broke uh, a little bit a little bit earlier this week. Um, I was driving. I was driving and I, I got an, an alert to my Gmail. <laughs> I get an alert anytime somebody I'm following on SoundCloud puts up something new. Stopped at a stoplight. Checked it and it was a new song by Your Old Drew. Banging song. It's called No Message. You know, I don't know if you've heard it. No, I haven't heard you. Um, real dark, real, you know, spit. I mean, just <sighs> spitting. And honestly, the jury to me is still out on whether or not this is Nas. To me, this song sounds less like Nas oh boy. than the other stuff that we've heard. Okay. So... We just we took a station break, real quick, to listen to this song, and I wanted to get your impressions of it. Well, I gotta disagree. Like this sounds, this still sounds like Nas to me, but I will say some of the rhyme patterns are different. Mm-hmm. But his pronunciations, his his references are still right in that same lane with you know this this could indeed um, be not but, but the cat on the end rfc god that was sick bro. he went that was in sick. that was sick and I, you know what man it's funny huh i wonder you know with with the with the nature of the game being so a la carte right now where like i could line up my whole life behind music like this you know what I'm saying? I could always have access to something like this almost on a daily basis because uh, of the nature. I can just go get it, right? Right. But I wonder, like, in, in the last 10 years, have I been, you know, have I really listened to this quality of music as opposed to just kind of dealing with what was available? Like, hmm, that right there, it kind of made me sick to my stomach that this was sitting out there. Like, when did this, when did this drop? This song? Yeah. This song dropped... Three days ago. And you got to feel like an asshole, bro. Like, to find out that there's music out here like that, that's for you, specifically for you, especially as a rap fan, and, like, you don't have it, and you can quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be like Quentin Barrett. Go out there and be active every day of finding what you need. Find what you like. Yeah. Don't be like me, man, and have it, you know, have to come down here. It's out there. And hear it. Uh, To me, it's crazy. It's crazy. Damn. I love it. So let's look at it from this angle. If this is not Nas, well, how gonna, does the hip hop nation respond? A. Yeah. B. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lie. The first thing we're gonna do is gonna lie. We're gonna lie and say, "Well, I knew the whole time." Mm-hmm. That's the first lie. The second lie is, "Well, you know, it's really not," and we're gonna try to discredit. It's not that dope. Right. We're going to discredit it. That's the second lie. The third lie is going to be, well, I'm not listening to it no more. Bullshit. It's all lies. All lies. Because there's nothing that you can deny about this music right now. You know what I'm saying? We, and the reason why it's got you talking about it is because you know it's dope. It's crazy. So don't front. It's crazy. When I, when it's carrying that story, when I heard it, I played it back four times back to back. <laughs> and okay, so here's a guy. This, But it's the perfect setup because we don't know this guy. Never seen his face. Never seen a video. Only heard the music. I think it's Nas. If it's not Nas, the way in which he's coming into this situation is perfect. Oh, yeah. Because it's such, it's such a tangent from what we're used to. We get this, first you get these, you know, you hear a song, you don't even hear a song, you may hear a feature. Yeah. Somebody will feature on somebody else's stuff, and then the cosigns kind of roll in, then you get a video, then you get v- vlogs, and then you get, you know, this, that, and the third, and, 
and then they're on 106 in Park, and then the album comes out, Freestyle and you're under on a radio show. Yeah, and then you're you're underwhelmed by the by the album, and they go about their business, living a lifestyle or talking about a lifestyle that we don't necessarily live ourselves, but we have to respect because, well, we don't have to respect it, but you understand what I'm saying though? Yeah, yeah it's all it's, a mystery. It's, it's the same thing like just like the you heard the story have you kept up with the story about trinidad james yeah yeah he's off now yeah he said that you know he got dropped by def jam and uh he's broke and i don't have no money if you hear a song and it's on your beat you know what i'm saying i hope you appreciate that because i'm not paying you for it and the rap game spits people out so the manner in which this is happening is perfect however the fact that he hasn't denied the fact that this is not nice, is a cause of concern for me if it's not him so if this is a white ch- a white child of russian immigrants <laughs> who's like 21 22 years old and lives on staten island or whatever long island or wherever Man, are we gonna be able it's to gonna be this? a wrap i don't think we're gonna be able to do this i don't think we can handle this responsibly because he's killing i mean he killed that he he killed the EP. He killed this. Yeah, and the, the internet buzz alone, it's just, I don't think we can handle it responsibly. He's not the, he's not the first great white rapper. No, that's not the point here. It's just but the if, way it, it's all coming to, yeah. to the light. I don't think we can handle this responsibly. And there will be a great, pop, a great group of people who will just try to dismiss the music because he's white. And, you know, and then they, they will look foolish. Then... <clears throat> Those of us who thought it was not nice the whole time, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna laugh at us for a minute, but we're never gonna get back to talking about the most important thing. Like, yo, this is dope hip hop that we get. Right. If it's nice, it's nice. I don't, I don't personally, I don't care. You know, if he's a white guy, he's a white guy. I mean, we you can know. talk about the fact he copied Nas. We can talk about. That, I mean, but. is he copying Nas though? Yeah. If he's, if he's <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah I, I mean, what if? Okay, so. Yes. Is it overt copying? Dude, that was 125th and Lennox reference in that song. I mean, he's I think there have been there are steps that he has taken to create the mystery, if it's not Nas. Have we not but but as a rapper, as an MC, we all study styles. Yes. We all study styles and, and what I found was when you hear certain beats, you channel certain you 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 think to yourself like this is something that Black Thought would rhyme on, yeah. and then you, when you end up writing, you end up sounding like Black Thought, or you you think you sound like Black Thought. This is you, what you're saying is this is a step further this because bro. the inflection, the references. Do you realize how? The, do you realize the the links he would have to go to to prove out that this is who he really is? Like we have to do interviews with him like at length and listen to his pronunciation of words. To yeah. Make sure, like you know that. We have to get everything out in the open and make sure it's authentic in order for him to say, well, no, this is actually just how I rock. Right. You know what I'm saying? What if like, he's like plies? Like, right. <laughs> like he get an interview like, well, I, yeah. you know, I did attend college. And right. And was, or you know, like we had to, we had to, re- we had to come to grips with Shine. Yeah, we did. We had to just kind of deal with that. Like, well, he sound we like never, big. I don't think we ever respected Gorilla Black though. No, never. Yeah. Action Bronson and the whole Ghostface thing. To me, as Action Bronson goes further, he sounds more and more like Ghostface because now the voice is the same, but the ill, crazy references have begun to get that way. And I like Action Bronson. Yeah, I go up and down with Action Bronson. Some songs I think he sounds like Ghost. Some songs not. Nah, I just I kind of go back and forth. But I'm a fan. Though. Rare Chandeliers was banging, yeah. crazy. Anyway, so if this is nice, and September third comes. And where is this place at? The some place in in New York City. He comes out <laughs> the beat, and and I've kind of like ran through it in my mind. First of all, recognize the fact that hip hop Twitter and the hip hop nation, from all of the publications to um, all of the pundits yeah. to all of the critics to all of the people who in, who are in the know are going to be focused on that oh yeah that Sounds night big day and mm. i can see like you know crowd people can't get in because the the response the interest is going to be high i think mm-hmm. you know and and I so wish that, i wish there was a pay-per-view for this like it was right that battle, right bro. it comes out you know it'll be on the internet before yeah, midnight that night but <laughs> 
his opening acts come out he has timeless truth and rast rfc or whatever that are coming out and opening they come out they do their opening act or whatever and then the beat comes on and everybody's eyes are wide and then he comes out and it's nice then what it'll go bananas it'll yeah. go nuts it'll go insane yeah it's gonna it's, I mean, it's not gonna break Twitter, but it's gonna it's gonna put a little fire on Twitter. Because what's odd is Mass Appeal, who Nas owns now, I think. Um, they're dropping a compilation the day before this show. So weird timing. Weird timing. If and, and if it is, everybody or will go back. At all. Everybody will go at all. back and revisit the EP that dropped a couple months ago. And look at it with a different frame of thought, um, because I mean, lyrically, it's crazy. Yes, it is. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I, th- that would be I, <laughs> for the spectacle, right? Just to watch yeah. hip hop burn. I almost want it, want it not to be Nas, nah, just to see how we would handle that. <laughs> but just for the fan in me, and mm-hmm. just like you know, because I would love for it to be Nas. Nice. You know, the, the kid in me, right? Uh-huh. I, I would love to see Nas walk out on that stage. I would too. Yeah. I would too. Um, to be honest with you, and I know that this, this may be very left field, but my hopes and dreams for Total Slaughter, for example, mm-hmm. which turned into a complete farce. <laughs> um, my hopes and dreams was that it would give people an opportunity to reflect on the artistic merit and value yeah. that's involved in rhyming. And we didn't get that. Shit. No, we didn't. We didn't get it at all. Yeah, cartoon. Um, yeah. Shout outs to, you know, uh, the people who participated, who really did put in work. I think Moot put in work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could talk about Total Slaughter forever, yeah, but, and the, 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 the pageantry and That's been debauchery good. involved. Yeah. yeah they like but um, my hope is that, my hope is that this would engineer some kickback. Not kickback, but this would engineer some level of focus being played towards the artistic merit of lyrics i know i live in fantasy land but <laughs> you know the ogs you know you're saying you know if if this is Nas, you know i really want to see people get back to focus on rhyme well that you you know you know what's going to happen well not what's going to happen what usually happens and this happened even during our you know during our growing up is where you have eventually there'll be a rift and the rift will be discussed between old and new so like you have the whole battle scene going on right we have what happened at Total Slaughter. There's another one coming up. Uh, Arsenal is going to be at, and they're going to pay for food, that thing, too. But then I'm looking at that interview that um, <clears throat> Fredro Starr did on Breakfast Club, and he's yes. talking about battling Keith Murray. Yeah. But see, to me, that don't, I don't like that. And the reason why, y'all wasn't doing shit like this, you know what I'm saying, for the public, you know what I'm saying, coming up. You're doing it now because, yo, we can do it, too. And we can see, gather some attention. We can do it also. Wait a minute. Yeah. This is not an also world here do your thing you know what i'm saying do right. what you do and then when if the people decide to gravitate to what you're doing that's what it's going to be that's why this year old drew experiment is so dope he's not doing anything musically that Nas don't do exactly he be, if it's Nas, he being Nas on the track it's dope don't production dope shit, lyrics it's straightforward and it's music like that he want to make him without him seemingly, him seemingly like without industry forces even in the mix right because everything's free that's very attractive to me yeah that's very attractive to me so real high <laughs> all eyes will be focused on new york city the night of september 3rd you want to put some money on it why what do you what do you think you think you think it's him or you think it's not you think it's him yeah. so we're on the same page uh, yeah but i'll tell you what to, to, to be you know an interesting guy um, I, I'm be willing to put up a little bit on the fact that some like gangly white guy comes out. <laughs> you know, like, I think he like, has. I think he might look like Jesus, like a Dylan. No, Dylan McDermott. You know the kind of wow like, the scruffy beard and all that kind of thing. I think with like a members only jacket and like a chopped haircut. You yeah. think so? Yeah. What? Wow. With tight jeans. Not tight jeans. He works but, at like, Wall Street or something. Do- something. No, no, no. He doesn't. Work. He works at like. <laughs> <laughs> Trader Joe's. He works at a gym, like he works, he works right. at a gym, but you know, so he's fit, but he's not like overbearing. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Yeah. You're in that bag. <laughs>
<laughs> so we'll all be watching um we'll all be watching and you know i hope that i just know that it will be compelling the whole story has been completely compelling to me um because i, I try to keep up on the latest in terms of hip-hop news and things of that nature so this whole story is going to be extremely compelling yeah i can't wait to see how that plays out that's really i mean i'm i'm really looking for the fallout either way I'm really looking to see what the fallout is going to be because I know for a fact that either like we're not going to be able to have this responsibility. Right. Not gonna so with that, we're going to close out for the day. Again, you can follow us at PAR Podcast on Twitter. You can also email us at pickandrollpodcast at gmail.com. That's any last word. Pick and roll.